In this video, Julius is gonna show you how you can track elements that move into the viewport of the screen. All the more coming up. Hey there and welcome to another video of measureschool.com teaching you the tech tools and tactics of today's digital marketing world. Now a while ago Google Analytics came out with a plugin called autotrack.js and it featured a tracking method that could detect whether an element moved into the visible part of the screen of the user's browser. Unfortunately this was only available within the plugin and you couldn't really make it work with Google Tag Manager. But just recently I came across a blog post by Julius from Analytics Mania who published a custom listener that would accomplish just the same thing. So I reached out to him and asked him if he could help us out and explain this listener to us and how we can install it with Google Tag Manager. Luckily he agreed and made a video for us. So without further ado, Julius, take it away. Thanks Julian. In order to understand why this technique is important, I want to illustrate it with an example. Here's an article in my blog and let's say that I want to track when the visitor scrolls down till the very end of my blog post right here. Unfortunately, I cannot use the classic scroll tracking because it heavily relies on the percentage of scroll distance. Since the length of each blog post is different, uh, some of them end at 85% mark while others might end at 95% mark and so on. As you can see, the data might be inaccurate at this point. It would be much more accurate to say that the visitor reaches the end of the blog post when he or she sees the name of the author right here. And that's where element visibility tracking comes in handy in Google Tag Manager. In this video, I'm going to show you how to track elements when they appear on the screen after you scroll up or down. In order to do this, you'll need to complete three steps. The first step is to create and configure custom auto event listener. That listener will be looking for particular elements or element to appear on the screen. And once that happens, the listener will dispatch a data layer event. The second step is to process the data of that event. And we'll do that by creating a custom event trigger and data layer variables. And finally, the third step is to send the data to Google Analytics. And we'll do that by creating a universal analytics tag. Okay, so the step number one is to get the JavaScript code of our element visibility listener. You can find the link to the code in the description of this video and I'll just get it from here. Select all, go to Google Tag Manager, create new tag, and I'll choose the custom HTML tag template. I'll paste the code right here and I'll name the tag chtml. chtml stands for custom HTML and I'll name the tag element visibility listener. Now let's assign a trigger. The element visibility listener works when the entire content of the website is already loaded. That's why all pages trigger will not work for us. We'll need to create another one by clicking the plus icon here and we'll use a DOM ready trigger. We are interested in all DOM ready events and let's name it page view dash DOM ready. Okay, so what we have so far is we have named the tag, we have the JavaScript code, and we have the trigger DOM ready. But we're not done yet. We still have three things to edit. By default, this listener does not know which element or elements do you wish to track. So we have to edit a CSS selector here. If you don't know yet, the CSS selector is a pattern which lets you uh, pick a group of elements or just maybe one element if you wish. I highly recommend learning more about CSS selectors, but if you're new to it, here's a quick way how to get started. So let's go back to our website and inspect the author's name. What we see here is that author's name is actually h5 and its class is author-title. So let's enter this in our CSS selector. Let's remove this placeholder and click h5 dot author title. So with this CSS selector, we are telling our listener to look for all h5 elements, which have a class called author dash title. But my recommendation is to be a bit more specific and add at least one more rule to it. So 
we need to go back to our website and let's take a look how we can make it a bit more specific. So what we see here is H5 element and it's a direct child of a div with class author-info. So let's enter that in our CSS selector. Div. Each CSS class must start with a dot. So we need to enter dot and enter author info press space and we need to tell that uh, h5 element must be a direct child of this div so we need to enter this symbol so that's it our auto event listener will be looking for h5 elements with class author dash title and uh, that h5 element must be a direct child of div uh, with class author dash info the next two lines that we need to edit are actually optional. If you want, you can delete them just by removing this line and deleting this comma. You can also do the same with this line. But in this video, I want to show you the, the full possibilities of this listener, so let's dive deeper. So when the element appears on the screen, I can actually fetch uh, the value of that attribute. For example, Let's go back to the website and as you can see the author title has an additional attribute called additional data so if i wanted to fetch its value all i have to do is just to replace this placeholder with additional data and i would also have have to do the same here so in this case when the element appears on the screen the auto event listener would fetch the value of this attribute currently it equals to image dash one two three but in my case this attribute isn't very helpful so actually i would like to fetch the name of the author so in that case i need to replace this part with inner text and do the same with the event called hidden this way, the auto event listener will fetch this text, which is the name of the author. It would be especially useful if I had at least a couple of other authors on my blog. And when the author title appears on the screen, the auto event listener would fetch author's name. So that's about it. Let's save our event visibility listener and enable preview and debug mode now let's head over to our website uh, refresh the page and at the bottom of the screen you should see google tag managers preview and debug console click dumb ready event and as you can see our auto event listener was fired successfully now let's scroll till the very end of the blog post until we see author title Yes, we can see that. And as you can see in the event stream, we see a data layer event called element visibility. Let's click it and head over to data layer tab. Looks like everything is working as expected. We see the event name, it's called element visibility. Uh, we have visibility status, it's shown and element attribute is Julius Fed as we have expected. So that's it with the step one. And now we need to process this data in Google Tag Manager and then we will send that data to Google Analytics. By default, Google Tag Manager does not recognize custom data which is stored in the data layer. So if you were looking for um, visibility status, you couldn't find it among variables. So we need to create two data layer variables which are called visibility status and element attribute. So let's do that. Let's go to the variable section and scroll down and here under user defined variables we need to click the new button and create two data layer variables let's enter data layer variable name which must be equal to this value so for example visibility status Variable names are uh, case sensitive, so make sure that the S letter is capital here. 
and let's name the variable I call them DLV this stands for data layer variable and I'll name it visibility status and let's do the same with another variable which is which should be called element attribute variable type is data layer variable and variable name is element attribute let's save so that's it with variables and now we need to create a trigger because we want to fire a google analytics tag when element becomes visible so we need to turn this data layer event into an actual trigger so let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, and let's create a new trigger, which is using trigger type custom event. And enter element visibility. This event name must be exactly the same as this one. So make sure that V letter is also capital. And let's call the trigger custom element visibility. Now what we need to do is to test our variables and see whether they are fetched correctly. So refresh the preview and debug mode, then head over to the website and refresh. Let's scroll down till the very end of our blog post until we see the author title yes here it is let's click the element visibility event go to data layer and just double check whether all all data points are displayed correctly so everything works as expected now let's head over to variables tab and see what values do we have here so here's our first data layer variable everything works as expected and then the visibility status also is displayed correctly so the step two is also complete. Now the final step is to send the data to Google Analytics and we'll do that by using Universal Analytics tag. Go to Tags. Click New and choose Universal Analytics as your tag type. And Track Type, choose Event. And we'll need to enter category, action, and if we want label. At this point, we'll fill in all three fields. So the category should be element visibility. Actually, you can name all three fields whatever you want, but in this case, I'm going to name it like that. Action should be author title is, and then I'm going to enter our variable visibility status and then we have also label field let's put there our element attribute so in this case will be author's name if you wish you can also add this author name like this now let's enter google analytics tracking id ideally we should use uh, google analytics settings variable but in this case i'll just override it with simple tracking id let's head over to google analytics account copy this tracking id paste it here what else do we need to add it's tag name it's ga event element visibility and we need to choose a data layer trigger that we created a few minutes ago let's test the entire implementation refresh the preview and debug console now let's head over to our website and refresh also we need to go to google analytics real-time event reports and our website let's scroll down till the very end until we see the author title yeah so we see that the element visibility event was fired successfully click it we see that in Google Analytics event was fired also successfully and we see that this event was also successfully sent to Google Analytics servers so event category is element visibility event action is author title is shown 
and let's see author name is Julius. So there you have it. Now you know how to track website elements when they appear on the screen after scrolling up or down. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments section of this video. Thanks for watching. All right, thank you Julius for this video. And now you know how you can track elements when they come into the viewport to the browser of the user. Now I find this highly interesting when it comes to advertising tracking, for example. So if you wanted to find out if a user actually saw an advertising uh, call to action on your page and report on that, then you could do this with this custom listener. So if you wanna install this, then head down to the blog post that we have linked up below from Julius on Analytics Mania, where he's written about this and also you can copy the code there. Now, if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel right over there because we'll bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next one.